just take a look at my room. You can see all my, all my uh, swag. <laughs> well, Troy, I'm ready to get rolling if you are, bud. Yeah, let's go. Let's jump in. I think so. So I think best place to start is just kind of a rundown of what the plan is for today. So if you want to go ahead and um, kind of go through what your thoughts are and then, you know, I'll just be your wingman. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Uh, first of all, thank you, everybody, for coming both live and, and on the Zoom here. Uh, one of the things we we're trying to do during the uh, summer training sessions is uh, trying to have more collaborative sessions. So if you notice, like I, I did a, a session with Ash Gale on open houses, and, and we thought what might be the best mix for everybody is kind of get uh, these topics, but we give up the agent perspective, and then I can teach the technology behind it at the same time instead of just teaching tech. And uh, we've been finding that that's, that's been having a lot of real value here. So, so I'm really happy after being here almost a year, Troy, this is the first time you and I've got to, to team up. So exciting stuff. And uh, I, I did a survey on our Facebook group about uh, two months ago, um, asking everybody what their most desired training topics were. And social media was in the number one and the number three spot. So we had social media posts and we had social media ads came up as the top topics. Uh, so we knew that this was gonna be one that we were gonna be hitting here. And I, I thought Troy, I know I talked to him and, and his team has actually been running some Facebook ads. So I thought it would be great from the agent side for him to be able to speak to, you know, uh, how those have been working for his team, some of the follow-up actions. Uh, what I plan on doing is, is kind of showing you guys some of the tech stuff and, and turning this basically into a general discussion. You know, we, we have a little bit of a uh, subject uh, line here, but to really uh, get, have you guys throw some input or questions if you have them. Uh, if anybody wants to chime in and then um, I'm going to show you guys how to actually make and create a Facebook ad. Uh, and then Troy's going to talk about some of the follow-up stuff. And then I'm going to show you guys just also from that follow-up, how to do a very basic smart plan afterwards. Because the follow-up action, I mean, the ad is one thing. It's actually very simple. I think when you guys get in there, you can see, oh my goodness, they're, they're this easy. If you haven't run one, uh, that's most that, that's the case most of the time on a lot of the tech stuff. Um, but afterwards, it's like, okay, well, now that I've got these leads, now what? And I, I think that's where uh, Troy can really help fill in some of the blanks as well. Does that sound accurate, Troy? Yeah, let's do it. Right on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with everybody. Give me just one second here. I've got a command pull up in the background. Can everybody see that okay? Hopefully. For the Zoom people anyways, thumbs up. Yep, you're good. Uh, awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do uh, before we even do anything with the Facebook ads is just go through a couple of the things that you're going to need to make sure is set up a command prior to you being able to do any of your social media stuff. So when you're in command, doesn't matter where you are, but over on the top right hand side where I would say my mugshot, my headshot, I should be calling it a mugshot, uh, <laughs> haven't been to jail yet. But uh, <laughs> if you click on that down arrow, that gives you your command menu. And I'm just going to go down to our settings. Okay. So click on the command menu and then go down to settings. And when you come into this first screen of your command settings, what you're going to see is the apps or the applications that are either, either already connected to your command program or they are the default ones that are available to be connected to command. So up at the top, you'll see like I'm connected to both DocuSign and DotLoop because I teach both of those. Uh, but really the ones I want to focus on here are the ones up here uh, you can see also connected. You'll notice that uh, command does uh, connect uh, literally uh, to Facebook in two different areas. One is for your post scheduling. That's just, you know, creating a post, you know, happy Veterans Day, happy Valentine's Day, uh, you know, actually putting out your listings, maybe an open house or something like that as a social media post. That's one of the ways that it connect. But the other way that it can do it is also through the Facebook ads manager. And that's the flip side of the house where we actually create ads through Facebook. You don't have to go to Facebook and get onto your account to do it. You literally do it through command, create the ad, pay for the ad and everything, plus do your follow-up actions in command. So I, I find people all the time, especially in our compliance, that, that are just, you know, they're going to dot loop and doing all the work in dot loop, but they'll go to Facebook and do all the social media on Facebook. Well, that was Gary Killer's whole vision was to have command so we can have kind of a one-stop shop where you can do everything. So I always encourage everybody, do it here in command so that it can integrate some of these pieces together, which we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about contacts. We're going to talk about smart plans and some other uh, tags and things like that um, and how this all relates. So what you want to make sure that you have is to be connected to your Facebook accounts. Uh, you can see that I have one connected account right here. And when I say your Facebook accounts, these are not your personal accounts. This would be of uh, your solo agent. This will be your realtor page. For those of you that are on a team, you would want to connect to your team. You know, some teams administer their stuff 
uh, differently. Some of them allow agents to post straight to the team page. Some of them have an administrator or a marketing person who handles all that stuff. And maybe you just collaborate with the team, but then they do the actual work in the background. Uh, but if you are going to be doing that stuff and, and running the ads, you are going to want to connect to a business account, not a, uh, a personal account. Uh, my disclaimer, I am not an agent. I do have a side business. So mine is connected to my side business, just so you know. So when you see it, you don't see, uh, you know, uh, Keller Williams on stuff on there, then, then you'll know why. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to mention is that you can also connect to Twitter for your post scheduling and your ads uh, within command. And then the other thing, and you'll see this when we get in there, is a lot of people don't know this, but Facebook owns Instagram. So when we go in and we do a Facebook ad, you do have the option to put a check mark there and mirror that same ad on Instagram as well uh, to get more bang for your buck across two social media channels. Okay. So if you did need to connect, if, if you are connected, you'll see that it's like mine. It tells you you are connected. It tells you your name there. Uh, you'll see over here on the right hand side, my status is connected to one account. You can connect to multiple accounts. Again, for those of you that are on a team, you could connect to both your team account and your solo account. Or if you ever needed to manage those accounts, you could come over here, click on that manage button and uh, you could disconnect those or reconnect those, et cetera, if you needed to. Okay. And then you have the option over here to connect more if you did have multiple accounts you need to get a hold of. Okay. But wouldn't do us any good to go do a Facebook ad were we not connected to uh, Facebook via command. Okay. All right. So that was the first thing I want to throw out, throw out there. And Troy, feel free to chime in any time if you have anything there, bud. Yeah. The only thing I would add to that while you're pulling up contacts is for those of you that have a team or are on a team, um, just I believe it was today. If it wasn't today, it was sometime over the weekend. Um, campaigns for teams did launch. And so prior to this weekend, it was if you were on a team, you basically had to pick one account and just run everything through that one command account. And now if you go, if you sign in as your team and go to campaigns, it will prompt you to add that account, add your Facebook account to the team account. Um, so now all of the, the Facebook ads will be um, permissions and visibility will be available to all profiles on a team that have permission to uh, to make those changes. So it's a pretty big step. I know I can see for those of you on Zoom, there's not many that have a team, um, but uh, I don't know who's there in person, but either way, um, this is a really, really, it's, I think it's a big step um, for, from command being functional as a, you know, as a team platform. So yeah, and thanks for bringing that up, Troy. I, I think last year after we had uh, Mega Camp uh, in the fall winter time frame, and they first released Team Command, you know, there there was a lot of expectations around it that you know everything was going to be Team Command right out of the gate. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. We had basic functionality, but we didn't have uh, just like this, like you talked about the campaigns that was literally updated this weekend. Uh, literally, us tech trainers got the notice this morning when we came into work. And our regional team is actually meeting to, to talk about that this afternoon at four o'clock. So uh, definitely look for some updates on that. There's uh, probably going to be giving some training on that as well. Uh, probably uh, should be setting that up for the August calendar. So that should be, like Troy said, a very exciting update because it definitely uh, rounds out that team functionality for us. So um, I'm Troy, unless you got anything else, I'm going to just go ahead and jump into the campaigns. We get an ad here going. Uh, if that's cool, uh, you know, yep. basically, I, I want to just walk you guys through the tech side so then Troy can show you some of the follow up actions. So I'm in command right now. I came down about what six, seven applets there. If you guys ever uh, get frustrated with these uh, applets, they're, they're just your navigation icons that you can't see in the menus. Don't forget that you can always click on this red and white TW at the top, and that will expand out, show your menus, just like to show people that some, some people prefer the menus, some people, you know, have the icons memorized, but. We're going over here to campaigns, looks like the little megaphone. And you'll notice up at the top, you've got, you know, we're on the dashboard right now, but we've got paid ads, emails, direct mail, social posts. I'm just gonna bounce right into paid ads. And let me shrink our uh, little zoom window down there. So it's out of the way, there we go. So again, my disclaimer, not being an agent, um, I have created ads and practice ads. I just haven't run the actual ads. That's, that's one of the other reasons I wanted uh, <laughs> Troy to be able to talk about some of the, uh, the after ad stats here. And uh, so what I'm gonna go through is just basically how do we create these in the first place, okay? Well, before you do that again, well, I said there's a couple of things we needed to check on. One was back in our command settings to make sure you're connected to your Facebook account. The other thing prior to doing this is that Facebook ads do cost. 
they are monetized. So you do have, you want to make sure that your payments are set up for that. So up here in the upper right hand corner, you've got a payments option right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you can see that I've already got my credit card set up for, for uh, uh, doing a, a Facebook ad transaction or other ads, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera. So if you did not set this up yet, please go ahead and make sure that you've got your credit card set up. Uh, again, some teams administer this different. Some do, you know, personal, the agent providers of the team will provide one again. Uh, that's up to you and your team how you administer that. But you will need to have a payment option set up in here prior to going in and doing the ad. So mine set up, uh, it's set up as my default. Uh, and so now that I've got that, and after you get that, then we can go ahead and go over here to the uh, create campaign button. Gonna go ahead and click on that. And we are doing a Facebook ad. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose social ad. Okay. And I'll just go ahead and we'll put a, a class training ad on there for the name. Uh, that name can be up to 80 characters. Uh, you've got some, it asks you basically, what is your goal? And you've got eight different options here. Uh, I'll be honest with you, as far as formatting and the content, there's not much difference on these. There's a little bit of formatting change or whatnot, uh, but honestly, they're, they're mostly the same with some slight changes. The only big difference is the advertise multiple listings that will let you connect to the MLS and put multiple listings on there, whereas the other ones won't, okay? But as far as the other ones, you know, what, what should I use? Should you use brand awareness, et cetera? Uh, honestly, there, there's not much difference. If you want to practice them, you'll see some of them, they're, they're literally black KW as opposed to red KW. The formatting on the font is slightly different, but the layout might be a little bit different. Functionality-wise, though, they're all going to be the same for you. So uh, I'm going to do a listing. So I, I'm going to go ahead and go with the option to attract buyers. And then down below, you can see that's asking you, where will your campaign run? And this is what I mentioned before. We're going to run it on Facebook, but you do have the option to mirror that on Twitter or Instagram as well. Okay, we'll just do the basics on Facebook now. But again, if you wanted to get some uh, extra exposure there, you could choose those two other channels, okay? So I've got Facebook selected. I'll go ahead and click on Create Command. And you might see this pop up. This is that little wizard that pops up whenever you're getting into a new area of command. Sometimes it's just ask you, hey, do you want some help? Uh, if you walk through these steps, it'll just kind of guide you and tell you, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and skip the, the Geary uh, wizard there for now. And what I've got in the background, if you guys can see this, I've actually pre-made an ad from one that I, that I found was fairly successful. So I kind of mirrored it. And so I'm gonna copy and paste this just so we don't have to waste a lot of time just typing this from scratch today, okay? Uh, there are statistics I will tell you that have been found. Uh, and I think it's kind of weird, but maybe it's just because it visually catches the eye that emojis, ads and posts with emojis in them will actually get about 25 to 30% more uh, interaction with them uh, than just a regular text ad. So I would encourage you to put some emojis in there. Uh, and so, oops, excuse me. me go ahead and uh, pull down that text area. So I'm just going to copy and paste that area of the stuff that I've had. You can see over on the bottom right of this field, I can go up to 250 characters for this. So uh, one of the emojis that we found, you know, of course you get the smiley faces and the thumbs up and the 100% and all that. Um, but the one like this seems to be a very popular check uh, 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 format anyways, uh, is to use the emoji that's got the check mark in there, okay? Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and add just kind of a lead-in sentence. This could be the one you were dreaming of, okay? And then what I've done is I've just listed things on this practice listing that I have, okay? Uh, amazing backyards, check. Uh, custom fire pit check, marble countertops check, family friendly neighborhood check. This is a home that my wife and I actually looked at in Hilliard. Uh, we did not get the house, but I'm still in love with it. I use it as an example uh, for a lot of my training classes. So uh, you do want to go ahead and, and put this in, just keep it sweet and simple, up to 250 characters. Emojis are encouraged because they do get you better uh, interaction rates, but also you want to make sure that you put your CTA on there, a call to action on the bottom as well. Okay, and you can see that I've done that please click the link below to view the full house information, okay? Now, if I David, did not, yeah, David, go ahead. One, thing, one thing I would add to that would just be when you're, and it's just like any marketing and a lot of you, at least on the Zoom, are good marketers already. The biggest thing that you wanna make sure of in that main copy is that you're doing, you're putting things in there that are gonna attract the buyer. So you've got to talk, you've got to figure out who, what what kind of buyer are you looking for? 
Obviously, if you're selling Diane's million dollar home, probably the things that a million dollar buyer expect are very different than the $150,000 buyer Greg is showing today. So that's going to definitely impact, you know, what, what you're going to put in there. And if you can find something um, that's unique about the house, which is sometimes difficult if you're in a Lewis Center or Powell neighborhood where, you know, every house is the same. But if any of you were on Eric Forney's um, top 100 Zoom last month, you, uh, you may have heard him say, I think it's like 25%, but ads with or listings with a pool get 25% more buyer leads than listings without a pool. So like, that's just a kind of a crazy example, but if you have a listing that has a pool, you definitely want to include that in the description. And if you, if you see a listing from somebody in the office that has a pool, maybe that's the person you should ask to do a Facebook ad on their listing because um, your, your click-through rate is likely going to be much higher. Yeah, good, good tips, Roy. Thank you for that. Um, and yeah, and you're absolutely right. The uh, basic house is not going to have the same ones. You definitely want to tailor that, especially if you have got something like a, a luxury home or something with uh, some unique components to it. Um, and, and we always say that, you know, uh, what's the, the phrase perjury is the greatest form of flattery. Is that what it is? Uh, <laughs> so if you see an ad or you see a, a Facebook post, you know, they really just kind of grab, if it's grabbing your eye, then it's probably grabbing other people's eye or, or grabbing your attention too. So don't ever fail to, you know, just, I, I, I copy and paste stuff all the time. Uh, you know, just snag something, maybe put it in a Word document for later. Uh, even if you go in there and tweak the verbiage, you know, uh, keep the parts that you like, but yeah, definitely, definitely personalize uh, and customize that to the property that you're doing. Um, I did want to point out that as we're building this ad over on the left hand side in all these sections, uh, can everybody see over on the right hand side, we do have a preview area that's starting to be built. So it's showing us what our ad is going to look like as we're building this out. Now, if you did want to go ahead and just use the ad photos, I, I will tell you guys, I've taught some other classes uh, that have kind of led up to this class. Uh, I taught one about doing landing pages. Uh, for, you know, it could be anything, could be an open house, could be a just listed or a coming soon. So I've got a listing page, a landing page that I'm going to use. And Troy, you threw out a great stat there. One of the other ones I saw recently, I believe it was uh, uh, Jennifer uh, Lee that just put this out recently. Uh, the, the listings that you show with virtual tours and then whether, you know, it's a, a, fl a flyby or a Matterport video or something like that are actually getting 25 to 30% uh, more views or interaction than a regular one. Uh, as well. Does that sound accurate for you, Troy? Yeah, that, I've definitely seen the same stat. I think in some, like during the peak of COVID, it was actually even higher than that. Yeah, probably so, since everything we were doing was virtual. So just, just a glance ahead here, I'll just show it to you. Uh, same house that I was talking about before, they looked at in here. Hilliard, you can kind of see why I love it. They have an amazing deck, a fire pit. I'm an outdoor guy, just set up a new grill this weekend. Uh, so that kind of stuff I love. But also, you know, we've got neighborhood snapshot down here with some information, uh, a capture form uh, for their information. But I did put a video on there as well for a tour of the house. That's actually not the house, but I just grabbed a YouTube video so we could make one up. Um, so continue down through uh, our headline. Again, I, I've already got this set up, but you want to put kind of a, a grabbing headline in there. Uh, this, I'm going to copy and paste this. I think they've actually decreased the limit on this, if I remember right. Yeah, it used to be 100. Uh, now it's 25. Now it's 25. Wow, that was a significant, I knew they decreased it, but that's a significant one. Um, let's see. Trying to think of how to do this another way. Please view using link. Okay, the description I'm going to skip right now, and I'll tell you why. When we actually create this as Facebook using the lead generation, it's going to take care of some stuff for us. So uh, I'm going to leave that blank for now. I'm going to come down to the media down here. We'll go ahead and get that configured. Now, what you can do here, you can either add uh, images to this thing, and you can see uh, that you can also do video as well. So I'm going to use the images. I I've actually got some pre-made ones that I've already got made up. Uh, for this listing that I created in our uh, KW uh, Design Studio and the WeBrand Library. So I'm going to click on Select Media, and you can choose from the listing if you wanted to add images, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and just upload those images using the Browse button. 
Oh, and there you can see your smiling face to find our uh, folder here for KW. And what I've done is uh, I've done five different versions uh, of this property. Where is my folder? Hang on, just, sorry. Facebook ads. There we go. Okay. So we'll start out here with the uh, with the kitchen. That one up. <clears throat> and when you bring these images in, you might need to change the aspect ratio on these uh, just to make sure that it's cropped properly. So that's all I did with that that uh, pull down menu. When I save the image, it pops it in there. And you can see that it does uh, allow you to put multiple images in there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add more. We'll add some more in here. Same way, I'm just going to go ahead and upload. There's my next one, got kind of an aerial view. Now, Facebook will tell you that they want it to be in a uh, square format, but it's okay to do it in the uh, more landscape one as well. Just add a couple more on here. And the other great thing about this is you don't even have to worry that you've chosen the best photo uh, for your ad. Uh, a lot of people will put multiple photos on here, four or five photos on there, and wonder, oh, I hope I got the, the best one showing first. What they do is they actually uh, monitor which of the photos is receiving the most views and the most uh, interaction on it, and they make that your primary photo to help capture more uh, views and interaction on your ad, which is kind of cool. So they're kind of actually working for you in the background. There. There's, hey, and there's Troy's face too. <laughs> There we go, that fourth one put on there and I'll go ahead and stop there, but you could add one more if you wanted to, all right. So there's my four ads. Again, you can kind of see the, the preview over on the side there. It's gonna allow them to scroll through those. Now on each one of mine, you do need to follow your compliance. So I made these from the WeBrand library. So my photos actually have our, KW, our current KW Consultants uh, logo on there for the Market Center. If you did not have that on, uh, you just want to make sure that that is turned on here. It's, it's pulling this from your marketing profile uh, in the command settings. But because I have them on all of mine, I'm going to go ahead and turn that DBA logo off. Uh, you can also choose if you did turn that on there to, to show it on the right or the left hand side. Okay, go ahead and save those images. And then we'll go to our Facebook settings next. Okay, under the Facebook settings, uh, we're just going to choose, you know, which account and page. Uh, this is where you would be able to choose, you know, uh, yours or your team's page. Uh, for me, I'm going to go ahead and put it on my, uh, I got a couple uh, pages I administer here. All right. And then down below the destination. Now you could do a site or landing page. You could go ahead and you can put that link in there by choosing that. Unfortunately, what that does not do for you is it does not have you do Facebook having, uh, or, or Facebook will do the lead capture for you by having people fill out information automatically. If you put in the landing page for that option, you, you will not get that automatically. So we're gonna stick with the Facebook lead generation form. You can see that is the recommended one, okay? Uh, the button label down here, you could say sign up or apply now. I'm gonna stick with the learn more. And then the website URL, I can go ahead and put that landing page in there, which is exactly what we're gonna do. And if you take a look at this URL, I did a custom URL, so the address is in that URL. There's the 5448 Lark Shire Court on there even though it's under the KW subdomain, okay. So I'll go ahead and put that landing page in there. And then the other thing you can do under the settings is uh, Facebook settings is to choose what your audience is. Now, by default, it's got my location in there. It's got Dublin, Ohio. It's got a default radius of 20 miles in there, but you can change these settings. So just to show you what they are, uh, I'm going to click on this option that says use custom settings. And when I do that, it actually opens this up. Now I can choose my location. You look, there's different countries you could do. Um, if I was targeting this, maybe I know that a lot of people are moving here from Austin, Texas. Uh, in our referral network, you can actually map out where the majority of people are coming uh, via KW transactions and referrals to and from Dublin, Ohio, or any other location, honestly. Um, so if I want to do this in another place, I could as well. I'll leave Dublin as the default. Uh, but know that you can change that location. Uh, under the radius, I can go down to 15 miles. You can decrease that. Again, the default is 20. 
Uh, but if I continue to click on this, it will allow me to go up to a 50 mile radius as well, okay? So you could leave it the same. Maybe you just want to test it and see how a smaller radius does for you around a designated area. If it's a smaller town, you know, and you want to grab some, some other outlying areas, it's okay to go ahead and increase that. Troy, have you guys found a success using uh, a certain radius on your uh, team's ads? Um, I think typically in real estate, you're usually going to get the best results with doing the smallest radius possible. Um, just, I mean, they did, they used to let you go down to as little as two and then they, you know, for other ads, they will allow you to, but with real estate, they, they went from being very, you know, <laughs> easy going on rules to, in my opinion, going to overboard with regards to fair housing. Um, 15 miles is a lot, a lot of miles when you talk about a radius in a city like Columbus. Can you imagine how many millions of people are in 15 miles if you're running an ad in New York City? Like, I don't think there's any way to, to so anyways, I would keep it at the smallest. Um, and then if, if I wanted larger, I would probably do what you mentioned and actually pick a completely different area like Chicago or Austin and run a second ad in that location with all the same, you know, kind of verbiage. The one thing I know that we do do, and Ashley runs our Facebook ads, so she, she probably would be a better person on this, but she tells me that she almost always adds five to 10, like interests. Uh, under there so something and maybe you're going to get to that but like something yeah, like this, right now. <laughs> kitchen um you know those types of things um to just to try to kind of narrow things down a little bit you know if you guys have any uh particular ones that have been working real well for you guys as far as the interest go i asked her and she said things like first time home buyer kitchen remodel budget like those types of things. You, uh, and, and what we're doing here, gang, is, is Facebook can, can literally match you with your audience by people that have put that they have interest in these areas. So it helps target your ad a little more. So let's just do, uh, I'll do home buyer and just see what we get. Uh, no data found on that. How about? Yeah, like if we look into real estate, we've got real estate brokers, investing, appraisals, economics. Uh, entrepreneurs, all kinds of different things. Try first time uh, buyer. Whoops. Sorry, my mouse is but, very sensitive. No, that's fine. I mean, I want to make sure we get to the to the follow up too. Yeah. So hmm. nothing match on that. Yeah, it's on loading. That. It's thinking. Be patient. There we go. First time home buyer grant. Yeah, so so those yeah. types of things though can be really effective. Like I said, depending on who your who your target is. Yeah, and Troy, you brought up a great example of like the luxury homes or people that um, have swimming pools. If we had a swimming pool, we could look for something like that, uh, so that you can help target that ad more. The other thing is that if I pause on the uh, search result that came up. It actually tells you what the audience size for that interest. So this is 6.7 million people uh, that have shown that they have an interest in that area. Okay, um, so that'll help you. So I'll go ahead and put one on for now. You, I think you guys kind of get the idea, uh, but you can put multiple interests on there. Okay. Uh, the lead settings. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now this is brand new to Command. This is something that I, I know that I'm excited about. Uh, a lot of people have been asked for this kind of functionality, and this is what we mentioned just a couple of weeks ago. They added this. Uh, you can actually tag uh, this ad so that when certain people come in uh, from the lead generation from Facebook, when they automatically add them to your command database, they'll automatically be tagged with a certain tag. So I've already got one set up. So if I click on this down arrow, these are all the different tags that I have. And I think I did one for, yeah, here we go, Facebook ad practice just for today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add that tag in there. And now anybody that comes in as a lead gen off of my Facebook ad and, and they get saved as a contact and command, they're automatically going to have this tag in there. Now, the cool thing about having the tag in the contact automatically is normally we would have to go do this manually. 
right? I might get some Facebook lead ads. I'd have to go into my contacts. You can do a bulk tag ad, but you can still have to go manually do it or do it one by one or do a bulk tag ad. But then if you have follow-up actions, which we're about to talk about as well, maybe a smart plan or other things, then you would have to go add that tag that you use as a trigger in the smart plan. Well, now I can automatically assign them to the smart plan from here as well. Both of these are brand new and I've got one here. Should be uh, birthday. Uh, okay, I thought I said it earlier. <laughs> here we'll just go. We'll put them into my open house one. But that would be one that I maybe I pre-created uh, that had uh, Facebook uh, uh, follow-ups on there for you. Okay, so go ahead and save those. And then the last thing you do is the duration and the budget. So basically, you choose from these calendars. You just click on the calendars and pull these down. You would choose a start date and an end date for these to set your duration. And then from that, what your total uh, campaign budget is, and then they would tell you daily per channel uh, how much is going on. So if I did this for 10 days at a total campaign budget of $30, basically I'm doing $3 a day uh, on this. Okay, and you can see kind of the breakdown stats right there. Okay, and again, the, the, uh, the preview over here on the right-hand side of my ad, including the text, and the photos that I had in there as well, okay? So that's how you make the basic ad. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna save it as a draft so I don't get charged 30 bucks for this for today. <laughs> but uh, hopefully you guys get the idea on the creation process, okay? Here we go. Okay, and when you're done with the ad, um, it does take, uh, I, I mean, all the ones that I've heard have come back within 24 hours. I think that's kind of their guarantee. Uh, Facebook does have a review process. There was a link while we were in that creation window uh, that you could link over and view their advertising pro uh, policies. I pulled that up just so you could see this is the page that you get. I'm not gonna go through this. You guys can see why as I scroll down, this is uh, insanely long. Um, so <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in there. It's kind of like when you, you sign an online agreement or disclosure statement, everybody kind of scrolls to the bottom and hit, I agree. And for all you know, you just signed away your firstborn child, right? Uh, <laughs> but at some point in time, just to familiarize uh, yourself with it, I would come in here and at least browse through the different areas and just kind of get an overview of them, okay? All right, so when we're done, uh, we have the ads. Once it gets approved, it's going to go live uh, in our designated area for the radius and with any interest that we had on there. So um, after that, you're gonna start, what you're hopefully gonna see is some traffic starting on this. And you've got some different things over here, CPM, CPC, CPLC. Uh, let me just pull this up for you real quick. The CPM is just your cost for a thousand impressions for every thousand people you got. Uh, what is what is your budget showing there? The CPC is your cost per link click. So people actually go and click on your link and go and check it out. It'll break that cost down for you as well. And then the CPLC is your cost per lead capture. Once you actually start capturing people in there is lead capture. That, that I think is a more definitive thing because then it tells you how much did I basically pay for each of my leads which is a very important budgeting factor. So, uh, Troy, you want to jump in here and kind of talk about some of this? Yeah, I mean, I won't. I don't want to get too deep into the weeds with this, but I would say typically what we're, you know, what you, what we're seeing is like one one to four dollars per lead, just depending on the type of ad. My experience has been the lower price stuff tends to get more traction. Um, so we usually get a lower cost per lead on the, the stuff that's maybe targeted at first time home buyers or maybe, you know, the lower priced homes. But I think if you, you know, with luxury homes too, you're going to get a lot more, probably a lot more clicks, but maybe less leads when they get to that lead capture for them, they may bounce back because people are just want to look. Um, but they're not necessarily, you know, interested in buying. So it definitely varies, um, but definitely doing it through Facebook. I mean, we've run kind of parallel ads and it usually saves us about 50% off the cost of doing it just through, you know, Facebook without going through command. So, and now with the smart plan follow-up, I think, one thing to keep in mind, and, and most likely if you're on this call, you're either exploring Facebook, but probably many of you have already done it. You know, it, it's really a long-term game. I mean, if you do enough um, 
you know, pay per click leads through Facebook or Google or any of those sources, you'll eventually get a right now buyer. But I definitely wouldn't expect that running one $30 ad is going to produce three A buyers. Um, you know, so, so the name of the game is absolutely follow up. So I think, you know, it's a game changer to what's happened over the last, you know, month or two, month or two with regards to um, adding smart plans automatically so that when a lead comes in, you don't have to be sitting at your computer or, or jumping on your phone and trying to text them immediately. You can already have that smart plan set up to either send them an email or text them or both. And then when you have time, you can then follow up by phone, but then also kind of keeping them, you know, staying in front of them with just just general information. And then obviously the other thing, the tagging is something that we've been using a lot um, for you know, other types of marketing, like for example, our newsletter marketing or just a, a quick email um, to a specific segment of the database. So for example, for us, uh, we do a lot with investors. And so one thing that there's been a lot of things going on with investors during COVID and, you know, kind of these rent moratoriums and all kinds of different things that the government's imposed on, uh, on landlords in terms of not letting people foreclose, not letting people evict, all those kinds of things. Well, for over the last couple of months, there's been a lot of changes with that. And they've, you know, they've come out and NAR will send out an email and so what I've been able to do is just go ahead and download the list of people that have the tag of investor in my database, throw them into Gmail or MailChimp or something like that and send out a quick email um, just basically saying you can also set up a smart plan and then send an email through command as well. I found it for me personally, it's just as easy to, to pull them out and just shoot it. But either way you do it. Um, you know, the more tags that you have, just the, the, the more you can do with your database. It, even, even the leads that you haven't spoken with, um, for I know a lot of people in the office work pretty centrally located around like Dublin, Powell, Hilliard, Upper Arlington. And, you know, being able to advertise if you have, let's say you're running a listing for your million dollar or an ad for your million dollar listing, and you get a bunch of, you know, you get 15 leads. Well, next time you get a million dollar listing or next time you have a price reduction, if all those people are already tagged with that property address, then all you have to do is pull that list down and you can send them a nice, hey, just to let you know, you know, this listing just had a price reduction or, hey, that I know you were interested in 123 Main Street. So I think that you would be interested in four, five, six, you know, Red Street or whatever. Um, and so I think there's just a ton of value and it's really with almost no effort. You're just clicking those buttons when you set it up and then you can go in and do lots of stuff with it later. And, and Troy, you bring a, a, up a good point too, as far as the, uh, the style in which people do their follow-up actions. Um, some people like, I, I think what you said was it, it's just as easy sometimes for you to just go in and manually do an email campaign, whether it's command or MailChimp, et cetera. And sometimes the uh, smart plans are the better option. I, I find that I get that a lot because with all of, we're pushing what 300 agents now at, at, here at Consultants. And so we've got a variety of people that are either solo agents or teams, some of the solo agents have either part-time or full-time jobs and doing the real estate thing on the side to build up to that, et cetera. And so really it, sometimes it literally boils down to uh, your time and the time that you have available to you. And again, some teams, you know, you have an admin or a marketing person who might be able to help out with some of those follow-up actions, but for a lot of solo agents who don't have a lot of time, sometimes maybe the smart plan, it's a little bit of investment of time on the forefront, but then afterwards, like you said, all those follow-up actions, they're done immediately upon tagging the, the leads and then uh, putting them into that smart plan even before you run that ad. So, uh, yeah. so that's something that, that I definitely want. Go ahead, Troy. I just wanted to make sure to bring up the idea that definitely to differentiate between the, the tag and the smart plan, because I do think 
Um, there were a lot of people because you could kind of have the workaround and command to set up a smart plan if something was tagged appropriately. And so if you're somebody who's been using Facebook leads at a high level, you could kind of get a false sense of security that you no longer need to tag it because of the fact that you can now set up a smart plan automatically. My encouragement, though, is when we when we talk about what a database is, and, you know, Jason Abrams is the one that always says, you know, we need to have a data bank, not a database, because the reality is the database is just a phone book. And the reality is, is that anybody can buy everyone's name, phone number, email and home address if you're just willing to pay what is it like 50 cents a name or whatever. So the reality is nobody's going to when you go to retire or you want to hand off your business. Nobody's going to pay you thousands of dollars for a list of name, phone number, email, and home address. What people are going to pay for, though, is the ability to market to your database on a very specific level. So that's things like, you know, where do they live and what do they like to do so that, you know, when I have an event coming up at a golf course, I can easily send out an invitation to everybody in my database that's a golfer. Or like for me, I have a tag in my database that says hockey. So whenever I have hockey tickets that I don't want to use or whenever we're doing an event around hockey, because we have a lot of people in our database that we know from hockey, like it's easy for me to just create a couple tags, pull down that database list and then market to those people individually. Now to Diane, who maybe knows three people and Diane, if you know lots, sorry, but who, who play or are interested in hockey, like to her, that's worthless. But if somebody's buying my database, they better know how to talk to my hockey people because that's 25% of my database. Um, and so you, the, the real goal as we move into, you know, the next phase, and we're already in the middle of the technological revolution, but as we move into that, the things that Zillow and those people can't do is communicate in a one-to-one -one kind of belly-to-belly -belly conversation with our database. It's no longer the only, we're not the only people that can send them real estate listings. So we have to figure out a way to provide value to them at an individual level. And trust me, Zillow and everybody else is going to get better and better and better at this. So if we're just still sitting here five or 10 years from now, and the only value we have is to send them a listing, um, we're going to be behind the eight ball. So I think it don't, don't freak out if your database doesn't have 100 tags in it, but make sure that when you get a lead off of a Dublin million dollar listing, that whether you have a tag that's Dublin million dollar listing or whether you have a tag that has to do with that street address, that there's some way that six months from now, when you walk into a listing appointment for another million dollar listing in Dublin, that you can sit there and tell them, well, right now, currently off of all the marketing that I've done over the last two years in Dublin for million dollar listings, I actually have 275 people that have inquired about other million dollar listings. And what we know about million dollar buyers is that their average time from starting to look to purchasing something is blah, blah, blah. And so X number of those 350 people are still going to be out looking for houses. Now, whether that's a, an extreme value or not, at the end of the day, whether or not your buyer is going to come from that buyer pool is irrelevant. But what I can guarantee you is that most agents, if not all other agents that they're talking to, if they are talking to other people, don't have that. And so you're going to stand out and you're going to be able to hopefully win the listing because you have that database and somebody else doesn't. And Troy, you, you bring up another good point. One of the things that I just, as a tech trainer, I've been getting hit up for with uh, lately on one-on-one -on -one calls is people asking for help cleaning up their database. Um, and a lot of that has to do, you know, one of the class I taught was how to download your phone contacts. I know Heather and I have been working uh, extensively on getting all her contacts from various places uh, or how to download your Facebook contacts in the command as well, you know. And uh, one of the things that that's, uh, I always tell everybody because they're asking me as a best practice, a lot of this had to do with the open houses, so this directly applies. Now that we have that auto tag feature, when you create the Facebook ads, 
I would say, even if you're not going to do a smart plan, always, always tag those contacts when they come in. The easiest time to do it is right when you get the contact, even if it's just from, you know, the Facebook ad, like you said, one, two, three, four Main Street, or like when Ash and I did our open houses, we did a, a lead capture form on our landing page. Once we got those contacts, we tagged them open house, you know, one, two, three, four Avengers Avenue, whatever the case may be, uh, put the one tag on there so you know where they came from. But then, yeah, those follow-up actions are, are going to be your goal. You know, whether, like you said, you want to manually go out and do an email or, uh, uh, you know, some follow-up action, add them to a smart plan later on. If you have the time and you set up a smart plan uh, ahead of time and you're able to put them in there, that's fantastic. Again, not every agent's going to be able to do that, especially all of our solo agents who are responsible for everything for their whole business and, and don't have that kind of time luxury. So, yeah, awesome points. Yeah, and I would definitely add to that. And I think maybe you're going to hop into smart plans now. So go ahead and keep rolling in the background wide. But um, is the smart plan is an absolute must. I mean, the reality is we're all the same and we have limited time. And so, you know, the, the reality is these Facebook leads, you know, a great conversion percentage on them is going to be one to two percent three or 4% is like what the best teams who have people calling and following up with them are getting. And so it's really and truly just a numbers game. Um, the numbers can work really well in your favor when it's done consistently over time. But the reality is a large percentage of these leads are not going to be good leads. And that's just the nature of the beast when it comes to, to internet lead generation in general. And so the, the key, though, is, is that you want to be able to find the people who are willing to correspond with something other than take me off your list, which you'll quickly figure out um, who wants to be off your list. And that, but there are also people that, you know, do want to talk and they are interested and you're looking for those one to four percent of people that if you follow up with them over time, set them up on an MLS search and just stay in touch with them, dripping on them with, you know, valuable real estate information that they're going to look at you as the real estate resource. Um, because NAR continues to say over and over again, 75% of both buyers and sellers only interview one agent. And so the question is, if they're starting to correspond with you and ask you real estate related questions, most likely they either don't know somebody or the person that they do know hasn't been in touch with them in a really long time. And once you begin to offer them value, they're going to feel obligated to work with you. It's the law of reciprocity and it works really, really well. Yeah, absolutely. Try. And, and, you know, like you said, it is a law of averages and, and a, a numbers game as well. Um, I've had some agents that said, you know, well, I don't want to do Facebook ads because I've heard I get some bad leads. Well, some bad leads, maybe, but that also means you're going to get some good leads as well. Um, so that's just getting the leads. But of course, the follow up action is the goal, because if you don't follow up with them and I, I believe what the, the follow up statistic is, you know, seven to 10 times follow up to somebody before you actually, you know, on average anyways, you know, uh, either make or work towards a sale or closing a deal. So, or, or just garnish their business. So uh, if you don't do those things, you know, then, then you're missing out on that percentage. So whether it's a few or several or, you know, 20 people that you would have gotten uh, uh, through the year or a quarter even, I mean, that's more than you were going to get by not doing those things, by not running the ad or not running, doing the follow-up action. So, so yeah, smart plans, gang, this is a great way. Uh, you can do this a couple different ways. Um, if you have the contacts, uh, or, or prior, excuse me, prior to running the ad, you could always come in here and you could create a smart plan uh, before you did the Facebook ad so that when you ran it, you notice we had that option to automatically dump people right into a smart plan when they're captured, okay? Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with smart plans, it's just an automated way to do your follow-up actions or your reach outs to your clients. You know, for example, a regular plan might be an open house. I've got a paper sign-up sheet. I have an open house, whether it's a day or a weekend, you know, people sign up. When, that's, when, when that uh, open house is done, I've got some follow-up actions. I've got to put my contacts in my database. Maybe the day of, I'm going to text everybody and say, thanks for coming. I want to wait a day. Uh, you know, maybe a day after that, uh, then I send an email that's actually got the property info, you know, landing page, like that's similar to what I have with a home tour, maybe a lead capture form and just make sure, hey, make sure I've got all your contact info. Maybe wait another three or four days. And then maybe after that, you know, do a phone call. Well, that, that's an old school regular plan. What a smart plan that command does is just automates that process for you uh, by using your database, okay? So a couple different ways we can do a smart plan. 
You can create one from scratch, or last year after MegaCamp, they came out with what's called the Smart Plan Library, which has been honestly fantastic, I think. Uh, what they did is they opened it up so that any KW agent that creates a smart plan can actually go and you can upload that smart plan to the public library. And now use agents can either create them and upload them, or you can just go browse and search through them to find ones that are similar to what you wanted. So the smart plans were awesome. It took a little bit of, of forefront time to create them initially, um, and but then it would save you a ton of time in the background. Well, now it's even quicker because rather than have to create it from scratch, you can find one similar to what you want to do in the library. So before I even look at Scratch, I'm going to go to the library real quick, just so you can see it. Uh, it's kind of broken down in a few different areas. I'm just going to scroll down. You'll see that it's got some featured ones up on the top. Uh, if I scroll down, we've got the top 10. You can see, you know, these do have ratings on them, like Amit, look when you're shopping on Amazon.com or I'm a tech guy, so bestbuy.com. Uh, star ratings, you know, one through four stars. It's got how many agents have downloaded. Uh, that item, it tells you how many steps are in there, the duration, that is in days, so this one is three steps over 15 days, and it's a bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, so every two weeks you touch your client once, okay, so that's the top 10, then we've got the top rated ones, okay, and you, what is it, what are we up to, 823 in there now, so th there's a lot here, I could always use these arrows to scroll through them, I could click on see all, and then down below at the very bottom, I've got the 50 what's new. And you can tell those aren't even rated yet because uh, what's today, the 19th? Yeah, they came out today, July 19th, July 19th, July 19th. So they literally just got uploaded today. People even have a chance to look at these yet, okay? So to save yourself some time, okay, especially if these are brand new to you, I would say make things as easy as possible. If you don't want to do a Facebook ad every week, do one once per month, do one once per quarter, okay? Uh, come in and do a smart plan. And if I just come in here and I just, I'm just going to type for the, the uh, search word Facebook, uh, I could do Facebook ad if we want to narrow it down a little bit more. Yeah, you see when I did Facebook, it came up with 333. I don't know if anybody got that. <laughs> but if I do Facebook ad, then it narrows it down to 50 different results. So I, I've got a variety, 50 different ones that I could scroll through here and look through. Now, I tell people that and I've seen some of the agents, they scroll and they're like, okay, there's 50 here. How on earth am I going to pick which one I want? Well, here's how you narrow it down, gang, or help yourself narrow it down. One, take a look at the steps, duration, and touches that I mentioned to you to see what's in line with what you want to do. I literally just went through this with an agent this morning. They were wanting to do a, uh, a birthday smart plan follow-up. And when we looked up the birthdays here, a lot of them were over you know, a month, and they touched the client like six times. She's like, I just want to send out a text or an email. Can you just do like one or two steps? So look for that. Look for the amount of steps over the duration and the touches that is similar to what you want to do, okay? And it's okay if you don't find it, then we can go back and do one from scratch, okay? The other thing you can do is you can view the steps. So this one is a, a Facebook ad follow-up campaign. It's got about, you know, a couple thousand people. Click on view steps and it brings up for you what all the different steps are that they created in their particular smart plan, okay? So it looks like a phone call, an SMS message, then they set a delay, there's an email, a delay, a phone call. So they're reaching out uh, five days, 10 steps, six touches. The cool thing is if I take my mouse cursor and I just move it over here and pause on the phone call, there's the script for the phone call. They tell you what's in there. So this can help you narrow down, oh, is this the right one that I wanted to do after all? Same thing for the text, send an SMS message. This tells you what the script for the text is. Same thing down here for the email. That's a little bigger. <laughs> um, tells you what the email script is. Now, of course, you can go in and modify this up, but you get to see what kind of the idea or the intent of the smart plan is. So don't worry if you search for Facebook or, you know, that what I say, 333, it popped up. Just kind of spend some time browsing through here. See what steps align with and the touches and the duration that align with what you want to do. Or like I said, for the text one, like we had today, we ended up just going and creating our own from scratch. But the library is there. It's got close to a thousand smart planes in there for you. So I would say get in there and at least browse around a little bit to see if you can find what matches up for you. Okay. If you did find one, I'm just going to choose one literally totally at random. Uh, here's a Facebook ad follow. Uh, uh, I'm going to say follow. F you is follow up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go over here and all you do is click on the add smart plan button. These do need to be uniquely named. So it's just going to say, hey, this is a bundled smart plan. It looks, sometimes they take two smart plans, combine them together into one. That's fine. I just click on that download button. And there it goes. Successfully downloaded and is now available in my smart plan. So now I'm going to come back to my smart plans. Refresh that. 
Hey, David, that that downloaded a new monthly neighborhood nurture right there. Oh, my bad. That was a two step smart plan. But I actually I've got a hard cut off here in one minute. So I just okay. wanted to real quick. Does anybody have any questions for me before I jump off? Thank no. you. You're Happy welcome. Happy says thank you, Troy. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Troy. You're welcome. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you guys. You guys, as always, feel free to email me, text me, message me if you guys want to chat about things offline. And everybody have a great day. Thanks so much, Troy. I'm gonna I'm gonna show them another smart plan and then I'm gonna pop off here, but I appreciate you popping on. But yeah, thanks, David. It was fun. Absolutely. All right, gang. So uh, just so you can see the difference, if, if you go through the library and you don't find a smart plan uh, that seems a match for you or just something, maybe it's a brand new idea or just not matching up, you can always go over here under my smart plans and there's a green create button in the top right hand side. OK, I'll just show a couple of very basic steps. Uh, these do need, need to be uniquely named. So I'll put practice class, uh, Facebook. And it's going to pop us into the smart plan editor. Now, what you'll see is kind of an editing area over on the left hand side, which is nothing there yet. But then all these different actions that you can add to the smart plan over on the right hand side, create a task, make a call, send an email, send a message, set a delay, just like when I talked about the open houses and I wanted to wait a day before I emailed or wait three or four days before I called, just so I wouldn't bombard them. You can set those delays here. So maybe coming out of the Facebook ad, the first thing I want to do is to send them an email with the actual landing page. So all I did is I clicked on send email and now this edit area pops up and I can go ahead and I can create the email that I want to send to them, okay? Uh, who they're replying to, the subject of the email, the email types over here, simple and design simple is literally going to be like your basic text down below. You can see it's got the basic uh, formatting options, just like it had in like Microsoft Word or Outlook. If I go to designs, I can literally click on uh, the design button. And if I were to have created something in my design studio previously, I could add that email template in here from the KW WeBrand uh, library, okay? So I would add an email. Maybe I want to go ahead and go over on the right again and click delay. Uh, I'll give them a couple of days again, so I'm not bombarding them. Uh, maybe then I want to go ahead and send them an email. Oh, excuse me, not an email. Sorry, I meant to do a uh, that step. Maybe a text message. Uh, this would be you would need Twilio uh, connected for this to be able to work for you. Uh, but if you do have Twilio, then you can send text messages if you captured their phone numbers. Then maybe I want to put another delay in there. And then maybe I want to do uh, actual phone calls. Okay, so I've got to make a call button. And I can program that to have them prompt me, hey, call Heather, you know, call uh, Troy, et cetera. And uh, that way I would actually start working through my phone calls for the leads that I captured. Okay, so I don't have the time today to fill that whole thing out. We have a whole other class. I, I can send you the recording on that. But that's the basics on setting up a smart plan from scratch. So you've got the library available with closing in on a thousand of examples that you could use, or if you want to, you can create a custom one. And if you don't know how to do it or can't remember, hey, feel free to hit me up on my Calendly. I can always just walk you guys through that. We can just create something custom for it if you want to do that, okay? Back out of that. Does anybody else have any questions on anything before we call it a day? Anybody online with them? Chip, Greg, doing good? Nothing here, but thank you. Okay, awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and call this a day. I appreciate it. Again, everybody in person, everybody online uh, joining us today. Thanks for coming. Uh, we will get this up on our YouTube channel and get that uh, out to you guys in a couple, three days. It takes a while to download it, upload it, trim it, and everything, but we'll have that online for you guys. And in the meantime, everybody have a great week, okay? Thanks, everybody. David, did you know these two young ladies' names over here? I did not. I know I've seen you guys in the office before, but I know. I'm Stephanie. Stephanie, nice uh -huh. to see you, Stephanie. Uh, and this was Stacy. Stacy. Had to, had to be somewhere. Okay. Yes. Nice to meet you. I'm Heather, and that's Adam. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Both S's, I should be here, remember, right? Yeah. <laughs> we yes. got to get a more comfy chair up here. That's already getting to me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness. Ugh. Stacy and Stephanie. Yes. We grew up together. We both have moved here from West Virginia. She's oh. been here for a while. We oh, just right. got here. Oh, so. nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, welcome. Thank you. Are you guys on a team then? or? Uh, no, we're just solo. We're okay. Just
Kinda. There's no such thing as just solo. You're solo. <laughs> that makes it sound like it's lower than a team, but we've got some great solo agents. So. <laughs> well, sort of like we're just starting. No, I know. You mean. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming in today. Appreciate it. No, no problem. Thank you. And I'm Heather, I'll let the you. Corner, if you ever want to talk. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> yes, David. I, I will let you know about the Wednesday thing. I got to find out when that class goes to, but then. Okay. Uh, well, I can readjust. Okay. You know the time. Yeah. I just wanted it like back to back because if we get started on the new card thingy, <laughs> we might need a little extra time. Oh yeah. That. Yeah, an hour is always better. I feel like I'm monopolizing.